So before I start let's just say this video is a bit of a mess though ADF is a fucking mess so I suppose it keeps with the theme a lot of information about ADF is lost to the warp sadly but I've got together what I can and let's start the story of ADF the communist anime loving Chris Chan. Isabel Rosa Araujo born Philip Vincent Haskins Delacy and formerly known as Ahia VR Harrell, often referred to as ADF became a person of interest in 2008. He grew up on the east coast of the United States and enjoyed the carefree life of a gay college student and anime appreciator. A series of setbacks in his personal life led him to seek solace in cosplaying, and by the middle of 2009 he had established a pattern of behavior whereby he would adopt the attributes of the characters he cosplayed. In an attempt to bring meaning and motivation into his directionless life. Dressing up as Sakura from Naruto led ADF to realize he was in fact a woman. And China from Axis Powers Hitalia turned him into a communist overnight. This all took place against a backdrop of constant conflict with his mother, with whom he lived and occasionally beat up. By 2011 his domestic situation became intolerable to him. And he left home to stay with a succession of leftists and LGBT persons in Philadelphia. He was evicted or asked to leave multiple times due to his behavior. Having exhausted all of his support on the east coast, he went west in 2012. This did not lead to an improvement in his situation as his west coast new acquaintances were no more tolerant of him than the ones he left behind. He spent several years dividing his time between Oregon and California, sleeping under a wide variety of bridges and anarchist crash pads. After being approved for SD, ADF has more recently taken residence in Portland with his partner in a government housing complex for people with special needs. Incurably narcissistic, ADF has written about himself at length, allowing the conscientious reader to build up a detailed picture of his life. Early Childhood ADF was born Philip Vincent Haskins Delacy on the 12th of August, 1985 at Underwood Memorial Hospital in Woodbury, New Jersey to Angelo Delacy and Jacqueline Jackie Haskins. ADF was born when both of his parents were in their 30s. Angelo was 38 and Jackie was 30-34. Angelo was a man of Italian descent and Jackie was a white bread disabled woman. ADF also had an older brother named Nicholas and an unknown half-sister, but little is known of ADF's relationship with him before ADF became an adult. Nicholas has been described as having severe developmental difficulties and seems to live in an assisted living facility. ADF made the claim that he was conceived as a result of marital rape, but this accusation is unverified by anyone other than ADF himself, who is an unreliable source and never mentioned the incident beforehand. ADF had displayed some of the classic signs that is recognized in autistic children when he was only a year old. ADF also had to receive counseling when he was just a one year old. ADF later claimed an unstable home life as the reason, but he was developing later than the average child. He was diagnosed as autistic when he was just 2 years old. ADF wasn't potty trained until he was 4 years old, despite Angelo's attempts. ADF claimed it to be proof of his gender confusion, but autism is more suspect. He was also kicked out of school at the age of 6 due to fighting and destroying the classroom, another behavior that is normal for autistic children as well. ADF claimed to have also had a turbulent home life. The extent of where the truth ends and ADF's fabrication of the truth begins is unknown. However, ADF claimed his father to be the aggressor in the situation, physically abusing both ADF and Jackie. ADF's parents were on the brink of divorce and such matters can lead to a volatile situation. Documents show the couple filed for bankruptcy at some point. ADF has made the accusation that his father beaten him as a baby and toddler, but no record of receiving medical attention or child services intervention is known. ADF's claim that his elementary school teachers, state mandated reporters, would check him for bruises and did nothing about it. On a lighter note, ADF grew up in a typical Catholic Italian American household. His parents visited the Roman Catholic Church and ADF was even enrolled in CCD classes at St. Matthew's School. Circa 1994, ADF's parents divorced and Angelo was given visitation rights. According to ADF, Angelo had a father's rights lobby backing him through the process of the divorce and when Angelo got visiting rights to ADF, he mentioned the astigmatism he felt growing up as the child of a divorce. Post-divorce 7th 4th 97. Then came the infamous 7th 4th 97 that is affectionately referred to as Daddy Rape Day or 7th of the 4th never happened to trolls. ADF made the claim that he was sexually abused, an incident that is unfounded by everyone but ADF and his sycophants. Through the 5-6 to six years of ADF whining about said incident online, 
His story changed noticeably. During ADF's communist kick was when he first mentioned the incident and the date which said incident was supposed to occur. American Independence Day of 1997 when ADF was 11 years old at a public fireworks event at Penn Landing. This is the only similarities between ADF's different stories. When ADF written about the incident the first time, he claimed that his dad fondled him, pinned his wrists, and implied that his dad sodomized him for him to rip, pound, and play. Eerily this is also how ADF described his supposed sexual encounter with Dusty, a friend during his time at college. In this version of events, ADF was confused over what led to the attack occurring, assuming that he might have displayed effeminate behavior. In a recent recalling of the event, ADF omitted the parts where he was pounded and about his wrists being pinned. The reasons given for the incident in this case ranged from displaying effeminate characteristics to ADF's egotistical view of himself as an 11 who was politically aware or psychological. Impossibility given the child's nature to parrot their own parents' beliefs and a lack of understanding of political affairs, artistic, and intelligent. To put the matter in perceptive, a judge did not believe that ADF was sexually abused either. ADF claimed that he made a police report and the case was immediately handed to the judge without ADF receiving sexual abuse counseling or a specialist who deals with child abuse victims on a daily basis, displaying either ADF's ignorance of the legal process of child abuse cases or ADF omitting anything that could make his story less credible. When the judge reviewed the case, he dismissed the charges against Angelo, citing that it was clear that ADF was being coached by ADF's own mother. ADF claimed that the judge discriminated against him due to his autism. However, judges, investigators, and other people within the judicial system have ways to determine if a child is getting coached by a parent due to the way a child describes the abuse. And specialists have more of an understanding of child sexual abuse than a homeless man in California. An unverified chat conversation with Angelo claims that ADF was bullying some smaller kids at an Independence Day event, and that he merely spanked him for being a brat. Regardless, at 16, ADF no longer had court order visitations with Anglia and they had more limited contact. It is unknown when ADF and his mother moved to Philadelphia. He was also in special ED classes when he attended Gloucester County Institute of Technology in high school. Which does have a special ed program which was supposed to prepare speds to enter into the workplace. ADF claimed to thrive academically in high school as proof of his intelligence, but given the low expectations of special ed courses, it does not amount to much. ADF reportedly had 5 girlfriends before Corrine. ADF had also gotten into Latino pop singers in high school such as Jennifer Lopez and Shakira, and a 2004 photo shows him wearing his mother's clothes as a J-Lo costume. During this time, ADF also started working at Wawa. Much of ADF's early life is known only by ADF, and the information he has shares publicly often shifts with his current interests and identities. In a deviated journal of December 2009 ADF described his background as follows. I was born in Woodbury, New Jersey on the 12th of August 1985. I currently live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania namely in the Northeast Philadelphia area, where all the taxpayers get raped in the ass. My ethnic background is of mixed race, I am Puerto Rican on my father's side and German Jewish on my mother's side. My mother's ancestors came from Israel before then, a part of Germany what used to be known as Konigsberg, East Prussia now Kaliningrad, Russia and my father and family is from Bar Yarmon. Utoriko, my parents have been divorced since 1994 and I have not had contact with my father since 2001, due to sexual, physical, and psychological abuse at his hands. Reaching adulthood. ADF spent several years working at Warris, reportedly through supported employment meant to help those with disabilities remain in the workforce. He also enrolled at a local college, and became a founding member of the anime club. He was not yet known online. Deviant Art Phase, 2006-2007. On the 3rd of April 2006, the ADF Foon Salada Deviant is created by Felipe V. Delicious, age 20 who claims to live in Huta del Cedros, San Felipe, Australatina. His idea of Latino identity was reflected in the rendering of Philip and Delacy as more Hispanic sounding names. It became home to his prolific cartoons and journal posts, and was his primary outlet. He ran his page in the sort of manner which made the website such a popular location for lolcow watchers. He would delete any comments critical of him and frequently got embroiled in drama with other users of the site. He used the journal page of his deviant art profile essentially as a blog, and this is where most of the insights into his life in this period come from. He frequently uploaded art onto his Dur account. 
His characteristic drawing style was fully formed by then anime type characters, badly colored in with markers. He mixed fanart and original art, but his fixations on pretty anime guys, military uniforms and progressive political causes were constant features. He collaborated with a college friend named Kareen, styled as Corrine, on a comic called Kochan High School about Yayoi loving high school girls or something in that area that doesn't appear to have progressed far beyond the planning stage. At college, ADF was a member of the anime club and gay straight alliance. These seem to have been his only avenues for socializing. ADF somehow managed to be appointed president of the Gay Straight Alliance, where he carried out his duties in a derelict manner. ADF's chief male acquaintance of the period quite possibly his only one was Dusty aka Canus, a fellow member of the anime club and Gay Straight Alliance. ADF also had an account on Yeoi Fanart website a gallery that was banned for some now obscure reason, as well as a she's art at some point. On November 6 he created War Were Haters, dedicated to stopping the injustices experienced at his employer, This is possibly his first form of online social justice. By 2007, his obsession with Sasuke had begun, with several new account names, though not yet built to self-identity status. Additionally, his interest in BDSM had moved from the comical Yaoi spanking paddle to actual bondage, for unknown reasons. His friendship with Corrine started to show a deep, quasi-sexual fixation with her, through 2008. He referenced her constantly and regularly drew her anime original character also called Corrine, confusingly in sexual and BDSM type situations, often with ADF's anime alter ego characters. He would often make posts as Corrine character, causing onlookers to wonder if Corrine person was just some figment of his imagination. He would even sometimes sign his posts as Corrine. This fixation began when ADF considered himself bisexual, and his later coming out as gay did nothing to slow it down. Despite all this, Corrine seems to have genuinely been friends with ADF at one point. They shared an interest in anime, yaoi, etc., and they collaborated on various drawings. Late in 2007 he created a fan club but had never progressed. Most importantly, in December of 2007, ADF came out as gay in a deviantid journal post of the 13th of December 2007. He also claims to be dating Canis at this time, and to have gone on a yayoi adventure with him in his bedroom. Officially gay phase, 2008. With the exception of, perhaps, his over-enthusiasm and somewhat childish interaction level. All of this would be a relatively normal story of an awkward but typical dork, but events in 2008 proved otherwise, bringing ADF to the attention of trolls, and sealed his status as an enduring lol cow. After coming out in December, ADF spent the next few months with business as usual, dating Canis, working on his anime characters and Australatina road signs. He came out to this mother in March 2008 by writing her a letter, after the failure of his plan to gently make her realize through leaving Yeoi Fanet, bondage apparel, etc. around the house. The letter was originally posted but has been lost. His mother appeared to take the news well. During this time he drew heavy inspiration from Sasuke Uchiha, a character from the anime Naruto known for his ninja skills and dark, edgy personality. ADF expressly cited Sasuke as a role model on numerous occasions. Even signed some of his posts as Sasuke rather than Felipe the name he used at the time. His interest in the character at this time was, however, not the unhealthy obsession it would later become. ADF said article caused him some minor grief from random trolls, and he drew this in response. Corrine troubles. However, times were troubled in his college life. Corrine and Canis had become increasingly exasperated with ADF's real life behavior. Additionally, ADF and Corrine were coming to blows over art-related issues. Corrine, being very much of the traditional deviant art mindset, was protective of her original characters and anxious that they be not stolen by others. ADF's cavalier use of her characters annoyed her, not to mention that he frequently drew them in sexual situations with his own characters, something she expressed her discomfort with. It should be noted that Corrine was fairly lolcowish herself, and her attacks on ADF focused on, in retrospect, highly tedious and pedantic issues around who had permission to draw what characters in what situations, etc. His unwholesome behavior towards her in real life, which seems like a much better position to attack from, was largely ignored. Much of this art-related drama played out on DeviantArt, both ADF and Corrine posting long blasts against each other on their journals. Their conflict attracted some external attention, and Corrine found an ally in users at Ukoi, who got stuck in the fighting on Corrine's side. 
ADF's original Encyclopedia Dramatica article was created at around this time, and Zabiko AU was probably the creator and main contributor. On the 5th of August 2008, Corinne posted a long denunciation of ADF on her Deviantart journal, which contained several notable items. He is constantly muttering on about saying basically if you are against me in any way, you are either homophobic and or republican. He is all 100% American, so don't let his lies fool you. He goes to same college I go to, and he is very much not on Canadian soil also, he has no accent guys. If you seen this video on YT about him dressed up in his attire and having an accent that is supposed to be Mexican or Scottish while he is Canadian, that is all a lie, and don't give me that so people hate me when I came out of the closet or that ass whatever syndrome, or even that communication business, they have nothing to do with this. Canis troubles. Canis also began to express issues with ADF's behavior. While at first ADF portrayed the two of them as being very close friends, when coming out he had declared they were lovers. Sadly the two of them fell out shoring the summer, and Canis took the opportunity to present his side of the story. Canis depicted ADF as somebody who was unable to function socially and who engaged constantly in embarrassing behaviors. He claimed that he had only befriended ADF out of a mixture of pity for him, and concern for his well-being on campus. He of course denied that they had ever been in a relationship. He claimed that ADF would frequently wear bondage gear around campus for which there is photographic proof, and that ADF would tell people that Canis was his master, which caused Canis considerable embarrassment. ADF also apparently shat himself at some point. Despite all this, Canis took a fairly circumspect view of ADF, criticizing him heavily but attributing the worst of his behavior to his Asperger syndrome. He later sent ADF an email containing the following quote. Asperger's, whether you like it or not, is a disability. Watching what you're doing is like watching a man with one leg trying to walk unaided. It's uncomfortable. It hurts us. And the more you insist you don't need help, the less we sympathize when you do a face plant. A final pivotal event in ADF's life happened in November, when he dropped out of college some say expelled and moved with his family to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Cosplay phase, 2009. ADF shaping up for his Sasuke cosplay. ADF was in at a low point in his life when 2009 rolled around. He had dropped out of college and become estranged from the people who had formerly been his closest friends. He sought a new source of inspiration and motivation in his life, and found it in his increasingly obsessive fixation on cosplaying anime characters. Parallel to this, he redoubled his efforts to find a new love interest. Phase 1 Self-Improvement Feeling stuck in a rut, ADF decided to embark on an extensive program of self-improvement. Closing shots in his feud with Corrine took place at the start of 2009, and her jibes about his weight appear to have particularly stung him. He boldly set out his intentions for the new year, the mission I have accepted and will endeavor greatly to carry out. 1. To cosplay the characters I fucking want from Naruto. 2. To lose 45 pounds over the course next 6 months to reach 167 pounds. 3. Have fun, and don't give a fuck what the critics who hate you say. He detailed the characters he wished to cosplay 7 characters from Naruto, and what this would all afford, between 2000 and 2500, by his calculation. It should be noted that, at this stage, ADF did not seem to regard cosplaying as an essential component of his self-image, as it would later become. It was a crucial ambition, but only in the sense that dressing up as anime people would signify a culmination of his desire to lose weight and, probably, to rekindle his love for anime after his fallout with Koreen. He went into more detail about his weight loss goal in another post. Quoth he. Currently, I weigh about 212 pounds 96.4 kilograms, I want to go down to 167 pounds 75.9 kilograms. That's right, I need to lose 45 pounds 20.5 kilograms because I am now getting tried of being overweight, simple as that. It is bothering me to the point I'm starting to break down in tears. Don't get me wrong, I usually have pretty positive self esteem about myself. But this change is needed more than just over cosplaying, it's also to better my chances of meeting my ideal bishy boyfriend I hope to have holding into my arms one day in the future. He planned to lose weight by taking up roller skating and by adopting a vegetarian diet. Despite intending to cosplay 7 Naruto characters, ADF was overwhelmingly fixated on just one of them Sasuke Uchiha, the cool loner. He increasingly framed his weight loss plan as a plan to look more like Sasuke not just to cosplay as him, and came to refer to it as the Sasuke diet, he cut candy out of his diet because, apparently, 
Sasuke adores candy. Elsewhere, he posted about his desire to act more like Sasuke by adopting certain of his mannerisms. He even began to sign his posts as Sasuke Uchiha. Updates on his weight loss attempt were posted very frequently. On the 17th of April ADF declared mission accomplished, announcing that he had achieved his target weight. This would allow stage 2 of his plan to begin actually beginning to get the cosplay items together. Phase 2 Live Sasuke. ADF as Sasuke. The long-awaited Sasuke costume arrived sometime around the start of May. Purchasing it required the acquiescence of his mother, as he was dependent on her credit card to actually carry out the transaction. The idea seems to have been that she would pay for the cosplay, and he would then pay her back in installments. Assuming his estimates from earlier in the year are correct, this costume set him his mother, that is back around 600. He took photos of himself wearing the costume as soon as it arrived, and pontificated on his feelings about it at some length. Sasuke Uchiha is an awesome role model to look up and to have to help a goal. I am very excited about my cosplay, and it's only a natural and I can't hold it in sometimes. It's human nature. I know who I am. I happy I got to where I got because Sasuke motivated me to where I got today. That would have not been possible otherwise. I really believe that I am rather obsessed with Sasuke Uchiha. But unfortunately it may be to the point I actually want to become Sasuke Uchiha. That is the part that is getting some people all upset with me. Having so far enjoyed constant success in his personal goals, ADF began to look outside of himself, and decided to embark upon a love quest his own words, to find the Naruto to his Sasuke. He set out his goals for a love interest in early July. I want to find a male Dobi, ages ranging 19-26 white, Hispanic and or Asian. Loves Naruto and can cosplay Naruto and give this lonely Sasuke team a lot of individual love and attention I crave as an Uchiha, so no multiple partners BS or I'll Chidori that loses us yeah. That was a male seeking male personal you just read. I can't stand being single anymore. He placed considerable importance on the need for his future boyfriend to be able to cosplay Naruto. Going too far is to create a deviant art page where he and his future boyfriend would post their cosplay pictures. Moreover. He stated that his sweetheart should not just cosplay Naruto, but should also be like Naruto in personality. A boyfriend who is like Naruto Yuzumaki, one that can quickly trust me, love me, and has a use it or lose it attitude towards life. We can see from this that ADF's mental confusion between cosplaying characters and actually being those characters was already apparent at this early stage. ADF's first attraction location, the Philadelphia Gay Pride Parade, proved fruitless. He did not drink at the time. Claiming that my alcoholic father, ruined alcohol for me, and my attitude towards it, 38 despite this. By the middle of July he was attending local gay bars in search of his future Naruto boyfriend. He made several trips, all unsuccessful. On the 3rd of July ADF claimed that his workplace had fired an employee for taking unannounced time off work to attend to a sudden medical emergency. This incident caused him to ruminate on matters of life and death, and he stated that, if my mother dies, I would end up homeless on the streets. Fortunately for ADF, he would later be able to achieve homelessness on the streets without his mother needing to die in the process. Towards the end of July, ADF appeared to have made a breakthrough in his love quest he met John, a freelance photographer in the Philadelphia area who specialized in gay subject matter 9. They met so that John could take some photos of ADF. And after this meeting ADF was already describing John as first candidate for who will be my Naruto Yuzumaki John's feelings for ADF at this point are unclear. John came into ADF's life at a fortunate time, for his relationship with his mother was beginning to deteriorate, as he explained in a post dated the 1st of August, which deserves to be quoted at some length. The very nature of the Dobi search has taken on a rather urgent nature. There is now an emergency need for future residency with Adobe. Sigh. This is not going to happen next week, next month or a couple of months from now. This is more likely to occur in 2010. Possibly in summer or fall 2010, I may have to move out from my mother's place. Why? You ask. I have a couple of reasons. 1. My mother is violating the terms of my coming out letter of the 25th of March 2008. For some of you watched me back when, this was a big issue, I was on a war footing if she did not accept me then. She is violating this by discouraging me into not finding a guy, this is a violation of my civil rights, simple as that, and fuck her motherly concerns about my safety. She is getting way too overprotective I am almost 24 years old and can handle myself pretty well on the streets of Philadelphia, and much better than herself too in certain respects. 
2. My mother is also in violation of the terms of the same above mentioned coming out letter of the 25th of March 2008 by making assumptions that I am not capable of certain things or abilities due to the fact I have Asperger syndrome. This also ties in with reason 1 to an extent, but I am counting two violations as two violations. This is going to cause serious clashes and fighting. If it has not already in certain episodes in the past I have had with her, it will definitely worsen in the future. Things are okay and stable for right now, but it will deteriorate as time passes into the future. To put it a little more simply, my future depends on finding that Dobie. I have at least a year to do so or I'll risk being in an abusive, exploitative, and potentially oppressive situation if I continue to live with my mother. On the 7th of August Nonsasuke Cosplays got a mention for the first time in months, ADF mentioning that he was beginning prep work for cosplaying Sakura. Sakura, another Naruto character, is the most prominent female character in the series. He set a new weight goal of 145-150 lbs for this cosplay. ADF was almost attacked as he walked home from work by a couple of 20-something year old African American males on the 17th of August. They called me a faggot and threw a couple of rocks at me. Fortunately he was unharmed. And he later worked through his feelings about the incident by drawing a wish fulfillment version of the attack where he got the upper hand on his assailants. He expressed his desire to move to a different, safer, warmer location, and observed. What is it with blacks and homophobia? 45-50 years ago they had a civil rights battle. What the fuck? Corrine Ray surfaced at the end of August, making a weak attempt to troll ADF. He attributed this to her being sexually and emotionally frustrated, changes. ADF, feeling completely dissatisfied that straight women and gay males would rather take cyanide than have sex with him, decided that gender confused women would be his perfect prey. It all started when he first put on his Sakura cosplay, that he began identifying as a transgender lesbian and then changed it to straight queer transgender WTF, the editors. Then he started taking hormones and even changed his name from Philip V. Delacy to Ahia V. R. Harrell. He also identified himself as a Jew on account of his obsession with everything Israel and need for some sweet oppression. Ahia V.R.'s last name is Jewish. Another change happened as a result from watching too much Italia he began identifying as a communist. Complete with China and Nazi cosplay, he was ready to begin fapping to everything Russian or Chinese. This included many sloppy drawings of communism uniforms, Vladimir Putin, and his own batchet insane dick general communist Mary Sue. He also tried to force badly translated Russian and German words into his drawings and blogs. Of course, the commie masturbation didn't stop there. He also claimed himself to be Prussian and Russian, solely because of two of his favorite characters on Hitalia. Some argue that the biggest change was ADF moving out of his mother's house. Adf's mom acted as a small voice of sanity within his life, but screw concerned, loving family, right? After destroying all of his baby photos and punching his poor distraught mama, ADF moved out of her house and into a den of a lesbian couple. ADF became much more insane after distancing himself from her. All of these events contributed to ADF becoming what he is today, which is, of course, completely fucked up. Denying that I am female is on par in my eyes of denying the holocaust. Chris vs Jack Thaddeus. ADF became known as something else to most Chris Chan followers. Out of the blue, Chris Chan accused him of being Jack Thaddeus, one of his trolls who made him hump his PS3. Of course, ADF jumped at the chance of making a video, without realizing that something was amiss. ADF made a boring video, trying to get Chris to move out of his parents house and move to Philly. He also didn't edit out the part where he farted on camera. Chris made one last video refuting Adf's claims. Chris stopped responding to ADF, due to the death of his father. A couple of days after Chris' father's passing, ADF made a video where he panted while walking down the street troll shielding Chris along with his good friend, Robert Stiles. Whatever grotesque mentions of Bob's death that were missing from the video were mentioned in the next video where he walked in a graveyard, presumably looking for his next doby. Not caring that Chris is still in mourning over his father, ADF mocked Chris and his mother, stating that Barbara was next to die. To this day, Chris still hasn't seen this video. However, this video is still used as an example of Adf's blatant disregard for others. Year-end mother puncher. 
ADF was considerably more quiet in the latter third of the year, posting much less frequently than before. He alluded to tensions with his mother over the amount of money he was spending on cosplay on the 15th of September, claiming that he threatened something drastic in order to obtain some more Sasuke cosplay items. He did not state how much these items cost. Maybe next time I'll threaten World War 3, without nukes, when I crossplay Sakura Haruno, he wondered. His job transfer went through on the 21st of October. His new workplace was located close to a police station, which he described as an epic security win a few days earlier. He posted another cryptic message, this one seemingly aimed at John. Naruto, you just forced me to confess our bonds. I love you. Do not give up. I believe in you though I will not admit you otherwise. Dobi, I know you love me as much as you love Sei and Sakura you wouldn't give up on Sasuke now, wouldn't you? I know times are tough, believe me. 30 days with the job transfer, still waiting on that fucking transfer, I am barely making anything. That will change soon, I hope. Stay strong. For Sakura, for Sei, and Sasuke. Don't give up on Sasuke. You have given me so much, I love and care about you. Tensions between ADF and his mother over money continued to mount. He admitted to punching her on the 21st November, in a post he quickly deleted but not quickly enough, for an intrepid follower was able to take a screenshot in time. Further fighting took place on the 26th November. The amount of stress in his life led ADF to bring forward the Sakura cosplay to January 2010. He explained his reasons on 28th November, just because. I need the escape of being the opposite gender, it's more than cosplay to me as this point, pretty much since high school, I have desired to know what would look like feel like as a female. He mentioned his transgender feelings for the first time shortly after this. Did you know I am also androgynous too that means I identify with both male and female genders, so I am transgendered and did you know I am crossplaying Sakura Haruno next month. Ahia VR Harrell made her first appearance on the 21st of December, described by ADF as a female persona I answer to which I will be creating into an knock of my female self soon during this time. ADF described himself as homosexual openly gay and a nuke, as well as incidentally bisexual, which was somehow tied to a long distance friendship with a much younger girl with the cryptic explanation, but were just close friends, you know how fangirls are around their celebrity. His conflict with his mother appears to have come to a head shortly before Christmas, as he posted on the 22nd of December that he had agreed a timeline with her for his moving out. He planned to be completely gone by the 30th of June, 2011. John supported ADF in this endeavor, although not to the extent of suggesting that ADF move in with him. Despite this, relations with John appeared to be improving ADF suggested that they had had sex on the 12th of December. He expressed his hopes that John would cosplay Naruto for him early in the new year. ADF spent Christmas and New Year alone in Philadelphia, his mother spending the The insanity continues. Some believed that ADF had a good chance to flounce after his and Rob's mostly Rob's failed attempt to get trolls arrested, because cops don't give a shit about internet trolls. ADF had a perfect chance to get his life back in order since he was moving to a city where only his then girlfriend knew his name and with trolls shifting their focus from him to Rob. However, due to his nature, ADF was never calm and rational during peaceful moments. After he moved to Portland, he claimed to have dissociative identity disorder, due to having a tulpa and being aware of its personality. Most pointed out that he is a hypochondriac and doesn't have that disorder, since people with did are not aware of their other personalities. A burst term fururama teresuama kamiyama, as the thing is called, is just some shit he made up. ADF was half right about wanting to see a counselor, since it is insane for a grown man to still have an imaginary friend, but it's not dead. Those who are wondering how ADF's headmate's personality differs from his own, it's ADF finding new things to fap to. According to ADF, his tulpa is a Wapanese, neo-Nazi, FTM who is also a violent dicis scum cop. Had this character existed outside of ADF's head, it would have been cunt punted out of the police station and into the same unemployment line that ADF was in. However, ADF is not known to use logic. ADF first started to fap to Nazis in September of 2012. It was no surprise that the Nazi drawings ADF fap to were Shetalia drawings of characters and uniforms. To save face from years of comparing internet trolls to Hitler and to continue to claim himself to be an anarchist communist, he used the headmet as an excuse. Also, ADF went back to his Wapanese ways and continued to wish that he lived in a country where he could buy used little girl panties from vending machines. 
Then came the next step to ADF becoming a full-blown Wapanese. After a brief stint of trying to mimic the amazing atheist, he declared himself having converted to Shinto. Understanding Shinto as much as Pixitori understands Japanese culture in general, ADF used a generic explanation of what Shinto is, suggesting that like everything else, he only understands Shinto on a superficial level. Due to the fact that he washes himself only once every 6 months, he is already breaking one of the codes in Shintoism. ADF and love. The truest lover ADF has ever had. Just the beginning of many horrible things that have happened. As was mentioned before, ADF would find willing victims in women who are as gender confused as he. Interestingly enough, these women do share other things in common, such as being dark haired and heavy set. In other words, ADF wanted to date himself in the female form, so went towards women who look similar to him. His first actual girlfriend was a genderqueer middle-aged woman who spent a small percentage of her trust fund on ADF for an expensive phone and $100 at a time for him to spend on cosplay. ADF kept going out with her to keep getting a part of her trust fund and even had sex with her. However, that was not enough to keep ADF happy though. He resented her over a small issue they had over children. He hated children and privately wished he could fuck one that looked like Sasuke. She wanted children before she went into menopause. Instead of doing something sensible or realizing that female hormones have ruined any chance he had of having children, he argued with her constantly online and even threatened to commit suicide. All of this came to a boiling point where he punched her in a bookstore. What makes the situation ironic is that he hated his own father for doing the same thing. Another ironic thing is that he is open about his hatred against cisgender straight, bisexual, and homosexual men and even makes violent statements about what he would do them in a particular situation, though Hassan acted on his violent wishes towards men. The next willing victims on his list were trans men whom he met online. The first one was an 18 year old Weibo cosplayer, whom after only a couple of weeks of dating, he announced that he was engaged to the girl. However, due to his inability to separate Jan drama from his relationship with her, they split up. His relationship with the next one went quicker than his previous one. When he first introduced the internet to her, he immediately described them both as married to his ad's blushing new bride. She's none other than a jailbait satanist who hauls herself out on Reddit. ADF even moved from Philly to Portland, just to get with her. They even had big plans of holding a satanic wedding in someone's basement and even have Marilyn Manson be the priest who weds them. After only a year of being together, ADF split up with her, stating that she doesn't understand that he needs interdependence and mutual aid. In between lovers, when he can't get anyone to have cybersics with him, he relies on his Sasuke plushie with OSPH to keep him company at night. Occupy Portland. Please do not get me started on Occupy Portland, high on my shit list after 4 cisgender men assaulted me after I called them out for transphobic and sexist behavior on the 20th of December 2012. I was punched a dozen times around my right eye temple, all 4 attackers I am pressing charges against because no movement is worth my help if they are gonna bash trans people for standing up for themselves, yeah. Otherwise. I am fucking done with Occupy and their hella privileged liberal reformist non-violent dogma. But he's not done mooching off them. Although Occupy Portland consisted of similar edgy hipsters complaining about their liberal arts degrees not being respected by society, ADF was not as tolerated there as he was in Occupy Philly. Believe it or not, ADF's mooching, backstabbing of his fellow protesters, and or self-centered behavior was not the reason why he was as attractive to them as a feminazi is in a love she forum. It was due to ADF being called out on lying to the group. It all started when ADF and some guy got into the viral version of a poor internet fight. Instead of two political nerds pounding their keyboards for half an hour, it consisted of the anonymous man hitting ADF in the eye after arguing with him in an anarchist cafe. As a result, the guy was B from the cafe and ADF was left with a black eye and his broken pride. ADF, of course, was not satisfied with the end result and demanded that Occupy Portland do more about the situation, including workshops in the movement that bend over backwards to deal with tranny problems. However, ADF made the mistake of lying about not provoking his attacker to the same people he was demanding from and was caught on his lies. The people at the movement told him off and ADF became disenchanted with the movement and argued with the other protesters on the Occupy Portland Failbook page. Ignoring this important life lesson about honesty, ADF then went onto his deviant page and continued to lie about the situation. 
Instead of one guy punching him as he had originally informed members of Occupy Portland, his opponent turned into four guys as ADF continued his transparent ruse. Despite claiming that he wouldn't help the movement any further, he continued to mooch off it whenever he could. Then came ADF's infamous paranoia reeling its unmedicated head yet again. He blamed ED for the attack in the cafe. His reasoning the guys whom attacked him supposedly claimed they knew what he did at Occupy Philly. This might have been true if ADF hadn't appeared in several Occupy Philly related videos, including the year old video that went viral on YouTube. If one even scrapes the surface of ADF's claims, they would see that this article was written a day after the attack, therefore had nothing to with ADF getting his ass whooped. Still feeling the burn from getting rejected by the movement, ADF took some great advice from his ex-friend Rob. He took a shit on the steps of the Occupy Portland building and bragged about it on Facebook. Despite his best efforts, the people at the Occupy Portland took no notice of it. It was just another day in Portland, after all. So I hope this video helps like, spread some light on who ADF actually is. To me, he's just another Chris Chan type character, like, he's just got extreme fucking tism, and he just should have stayed the fuck away from the internet. You know, um, there's lots of stuff out there about him, but it's very hard to know when, where this happened, and, like, the information's all over the place, and I know this is a bit of a jumbled up mess, so, like, you know, look, before I leave yous, I'm gonna show you a bit of a highlight reel of my favourite, like, most cringe and just in best bits on camera that we I can find of him and like you know hopefully that'll like you know I, I think you've got a good picture of who he is anyway after this video I know it's not the most comprehensive it's nothing on what we've got on Chris Chan Chris Chan we've got times dates every single day categorized down to the T this guy's just different same with a lot of people a lot of people aren't recorded as well as Chris Chan so like we'll do the best with what we can but look, just remember to click that wee notification bell. I'm going to be doing Roll Cows all this week because, of course, Halloween, you know, what What better horror stories can you get than genuine, like, they are horror stories, so they are, like, Roll Cows are horror stories. Oh, they give me the heebie-jeebies, all of them. But, look, um, if you're interested in that type of stuff, definitely click that notification bell and let's just get the little on, will we? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Roll I'm gonna try to escape from these guys. Bye, my back. So, I'm nice and tight. I can't get out. <laughs> so, try to pick the lock here. Uh -oh. Ah! Oh, that's one. There we go. 